Hey everybody, this is my Ender 3 Pro 3D printer, and today I'm going to add a dual Z-axis upgrade kit. So one of the things that I was noticing the other day when I printed with this is I ended up with a nozzle clog, and I wasn't really exactly sure why. Then I noticed that this uh, axis moves quite a bit, and we don't want that at all because it will cause the print head to jam into the bed or to jam into the uh, printer. The problem with the print head moving, or why it moves, I guess, is the fact that these Ender 3 Pros only come with one threaded Z-axis rod. They don't have a second one. I went online and looked, and Creality does sell a kit to add on another motor and a, another rod. And that is what we are going to do today. The nice thing about these printers is the fact that they are cheap. I picked this up from Micro Center for $99, which is a stellar deal. I mean, as you can see, I'm not some rich YouTuber that has a bajillion bucks to buy a whatever. I'm sitting here in front of a fridge. I mean, I, I, I could be a millionaire next door. You don't know. Anyway, before I babble on, let's just get started with this. So in this, it comes with a holder for the power supply, some instructions. I may read the instructions, I may not. Comes with a bag of goodies, bag of screws, wire for the new motor, a new mount for the x-axis, a new threaded rod, a new stepper motor, a nice stepper motor coupler, a stepper motor mount, and a couple of the axis idlers. So my camera died in the middle of me doing that. I'm going to go get some coffee and be right back. Okay, like just for shits and giggles, I'll just put this back on. And I'll take it back off. Cause you guys miss me doing that. You wouldn't want to miss me taking things off, would you? Might be preferable for some of you. Sexiest thing you've ever seen. I think the instructions now say to, um, what do they say to do? I may read the instructions, I may not. Assemble the double screw kit. I don't want to do that yet. I am going to move the power supply first. I'm gonna take it off. Sexiest f***ing thing you've ever seen. There are two screws here, and I believe that's it. That holds on the power supply. Been a minute since I assembled this. Yep, that was it. Oof. Well, that's not good. Unplug the power supply. Take it and put it somewhere else. Oh, so this is a stepper motor. Counts the number of pulses that get sent to it. And a four bit arrangement. And it tells it how many steps it needs to take, forward or backwards, depending on the bits. This is a coupler. This is a lead screw. get two T-nuts, four by 20. It looks like it comes with four of those, so it's probably one of these for both sides. I think it's pretty safely say that we could go ahead and do this on both. So let me get two more T-nuts out. Two T-nuts, two of these. So you want the groove for the T-nut to face the inside. T-Nuts, the serial champion. All right, so we got both of those done. I'll set them off to the side. So it's probably gonna be a little bit hard to see, uh, but I want this coupler to kind of be right in the middle, these two pieces of the motor and the lead screw. So the next piece that I'm going to do is this. We'll assemble it like that. So number five is M3 by 16. A nice little trick to not losing tools that I've learned in the past, uh, you know, in the past whatever years of my life. Put them back in the holder. When you're not using them, don't leave them laying out. Put the holder close, put them back. Even if you're gonna need it again here in a second, you know exactly where it is. You don't have to go looking for it. There's some ADHD wisdom there. Time for the T-Nuts again. T-Nuts. 
So it would be kind of nice if Creality just had this from the get-go with dual Z-axis. But I understand for a $99 printer, it's cool that they don't. Cool. But if that's incorrect, is this going to be incorrect? Oh, I put that on the wrong side. I may read the instructions, I may not. It's always a little challenging for me to keep these T-nuts oriented correctly while I'm trying to insert them into the track. So what I like to do is get them inserted in the track and then lean the stepper motor backwards a little bit to keep tension on them while I slide them down the track. So I probably shouldn't have put this coupler on yet. There we go. Take that off. Tighten these up. Nice and taut. Taut like a tiger. Taut like Tony the tiger since we keep talking about stereo. So now I need to remove this uh, so I can assemble the rest of the printer. There are two screws to remove on this part, one of which was an absolute bear to get off. Screwed up the head of this when I was screwing it in last. For when I put this back together, I'm going to put a little bit of blue Octite on the threads to keep them from backing out. Hopefully keep everything nice and taut. Movement is your enemy in 3D printing. You don't want anything to have excessive movement in it, otherwise that will translate to your prints. Alright, so I don't screw this up. This piece goes here. This comes in. This is the back. This comes from the back. Idler. Wheel. Idler. Nut. This hole is actually bigger for this concentric nut here. So pay attention to that. So put this through. Concentric nut. Pulley, wheel, I guess wheel, idler, nut. And just a quick note on these concentric nuts. So it's concentric so that when you turn it, you can force the wheel further in or out. So if it's dragging, and it's not easy to move up and down. You can turn it a little bit so it'll be easier to move up and down. Or if there's quite a bit of wobble, you can turn it and then it will tighten everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all of these pieces up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on this piece where it connects so it won't back out. So I'm going to replace this stripped bolt that I pulled out earlier with a new bolt. It's nice and tight. Tighten that up a little bit more here in a second. To mount the power supply back on, put the T-nuts through the bottom. There are four of them. And then tighten them up exactly where the power supply was. Put the two screws that hold the power supply back on. Rub some mayonnaise on your nipples and you're good. To gain access to the wiring, remove the four bolts, making note to not forget the one up top. When you're removing the existing Z-axis wiring, make sure to pull off the hot glue first. Otherwise, you might end up pulling the female JST-XH connector out accidentally and then have to push it back on like I did. There's not really much else to wiring this up. Just plug in the motors and the way the orientation makes sense and then zip tie everything back up and reassemble. Okay, let me jump forward in time a little bit. I reassembled the printer and then kept having some binding issues where the Z-axis lead screws were slightly out of alignment. I tried and tried to align the X-axis to prevent binding, but it just wasn't working. If you listen really closely, you can hear the clunking and grinding. I'll play it again for you. Uh, so what I did 
was I ordered some of these old ham couplers and these move in the two axes and will help remove the binding issues. You might be tempted to think that you need to add some sort of lubrication. Uh, if you do add lubrication, it needs to be a dry lube. Don't add a wet lube like lithium grease because that will just kind of gunk these up. You can add a graphite and be really good for this. Uh, just keep in mind that brass is self-lubricating. So technically you shouldn't need any anything to lubricate this. So basically you just want to run this dry, just like that postmenopausal cougar next door. You want to make sure that if you're getting the old M couplers, don't buy these round ones. They don't fit uh, unless you've moved your extruder motor. The you need the space on the side. These will not fit up underneath. So one of the last things that I need to do is make sure that the left side and the right side are roughly equal with the bottom of the printer. So I'm just going to do that with this screwdriver, make it go down until it barely touches the screwdriver, and then I will put it on the other side and hold the left side right there. It's in there pretty tight. Over here. Having these level is a bit more imperative on beds that don't have bed levelers, on 3D printers that don't have automated bed levelers. If it does have the automated bed leveler, really getting these level is just for binding. So the last thing to do is to put these Z idlers on. I've already put this side on. I'm taking the plastic piece off the end. We put these together earlier. Try to line these up first because I can never get them in and then hold them straight. I'm going to go turn this back around one more time. Loosen both of these up. Make sure that they can move freely. Tighten the Z idlers back up. And then we're ready to rock and roll. All right, now that I've done that, turn it back around, plug it in. The last thing to do is to reset up any sort of uh, bed leveling offsets. Every time you make a major mechanical change to your 3D printer, unfortunately, you'll have to reset up your bed leveling offsets. Depending on what firmware you're running, uh, that may be a little challenging. I know some of the time in the early days when I used to run Marlin firmware, which is what these printers come with, bed leveling is a bit of pain in the ass. Clipper is a lot easier. Before you do any bed leveling, it's a good idea to make sure your nozzle's clear. To calibrate the nozzle offset and clipper, we go to the terminal and type in probe underscore calibrate. This will probe the center point that you have set in your config file and then move the nozzle to that center point. Type in test Z, Z equals negative one to move the nozzle down a millimeter. We keep typing in smaller and smaller increments until a piece of printer paper just barely hangs on the nozzle. If you go too low, you can type in a positive value to increase the height of the nozzle. When you arrive at the perfect height, type accept and then save underscore config to save the offset in your config file. This will reboot your printer and now you're ready to watch some first layer porn. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Catch you next time.